Good afternoon, Bruin fans, and welcome to another edition here of Something Bruin with Coach Cook here in our third season and episode 11. Uh, Coach Cook, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing pretty good, Rags. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, hey, let's, uh, when I came out to speak to the team on uh, Tuesday evening, it's something that you've brought up in past episodes, but it's football weather. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. November is here. Holiday season is here. Football is here. You know, um, we're excited uh, to be able to coach this game and be able to, you know, our kids be able to play it. So to get this deep, um, you know, into the game we love, the weather, we bring that as well. Right. Right. And I think as offense and defense, we're running over, um, you know, uh, practices and we were just sitting there standing there with uh, Coach Thomas and looking up at the lights and seeing the the steady drizzle come yeah. down it's like it's like you know you got to be crazy to play and coach with this game because you practice in the summer to win championships in the winter absolutely absolutely insane in the membrane you remember that song yes, but, uh, you know we love this game and it's so refreshing to see kids you know come uh, out of covid and want to be a part of what we, you know, be able to, per- what we were able to persevere through. And obviously, you know, in, in 2020, the numbers were not as high as they are now. You know, you might have had a 35-man roster, and then each year you've added a 10- to 15-group um, of, of st- new players to your program. But uh, to be where we are, uh, that, that night was just like, wow. And it, it looked like it gave our kids a little bit more energy to be in that type of atmosphere, right? right. Uh, not 92 degree, you know, <laughs> heat index and all things considered, but it was a low 50 with, with you know, a nice drizzle, as you said. Um, but yeah, it was a good night. We were glad to have you on campus as well, Mark, okay. you know, uh, even just to get eyes on practice, watch the guys move around. And then more importantly, just pour into them and give them, um, continue to give them purpose, right? To understand why they are who they are. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of pride to be a Bruin. And we were thankful to have you um, volunteer to be a part of that. Yes, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, look to uh, when the regular season rolls around, you know, here with uh, this being the third straight year, you know, that I've been uh, been a part here of uh, Bruin football. And just definitely reach out to you and Coach Thomas to see when I can um, – you know, come by and, and talk to the team. But, uh, hey, uh, last Friday, uh, annual uh, annual senior night and uh, the the pregame festivities, and it fed into the, uh, the first two drives. Absolutely. You know, first of all, hats off to all 21 uh, Bruins, you know, that walk, walk that walk that a lot of us had an opportunity to do. Um, obviously, that is three years, four years two years of first year being a part of our program, but it's a 40 year commitment that our staff is guaranteeing every student athlete that we've been able to coach. And we really mean it. Um, that was a good night, you know, for our seniors, our underclassmen to understand that it's bigger than your year or many years to come. But uh, I shared with the guys about two weeks ago, Deion Sanders, you know, sharing with his guys, the word now and how now is in the moment, not, you know, present past tense not future but it's present tense and whatever you say at that moment there's action that comes behind it so it was good to see our guys you know really compete you know for all our our class of 24 um and it was good to see our class our 24 class laid on the field for our um underclassmen to have that one and no mindset you know with a victory in overtime versus a rival uh in grassfield um i was very happy for those young men yeah, and the thing is, is I've started to see, you know, the last couple of years, whenever I've come to any senior night, it's something more than a parent, you know, walking, you know, also with the siblings. I mean, because, you know, definitely, you know, family and the relationships here with uh, your team and your coaching staff, you know, definitely a, a big part. Absolutely. It's a commitment, right? We're asking them to commit four years in that process. There are a lot of other things we do um, 
to provide the best, uh, I guess, football experience academically and athletically. And, you know, to watch the parents walk through, you know, it's a big honor. We don't take for granted that they entrusted us to develop their young man, not just to be a football player, but to grow into a young man, you know, when they leave high school and move on to their future endeavors. So, again, it's just a big thank you from me and our coaching staff uh, to our school community, our uh, student body and, you know, parent and support staff to give us that opportunity to grow and develop their child, their young man, uh, so they could walk out in, in the near future and be successful in life. Yes, and, uh, you know, started off here with um, our first two drives, uh, rushing rushing touchdowns, including the second one being, uh, you know, a 55-yarder there by uh, number six. Yeah, Kanye you know, Baines. Uh, Baines. Yes, yes Baines. And, yep. Yeah, and, you know, and the offensive line, you know, just uh, – and even the – wide receivers downfield, you know, uh, blocking. I mean, you know, they're in the second quarter. I think the refs, this is just my personal opinion, I think when we were inside the five, I think the refs kind of uh, blew the whistle a little bit a little bit too early, but it is what it is. Joe Jones on um, Grassfield is not going to have his team lay down, and right. it, was right. a, it was a fight here for uh, – as it actually went into – extra, you know, extra possessions there in overtime. Absolutely. You know, I talked to Coach Joe Jones uh, of Grassfield at the end of the game when we embraced, and I just said, man, I see the culture change. You know, continue to do what you're doing. Um, you know, just coaches speak, but really giving them transparency and all things I've seen. And, um, you know, it was a good game. You know, Grassfield capitalized on a few mistakes that we made coming out of halftime. And, um, you know, it took a lot of us to really battle back mentally yeah. uh, more than physically to be able to stay in the game and, and compete for 48 minutes. And then, as you said, the extended, the extended period of overtime, um, I thought, you know, our O-line did pretty good. Our defense played phenomenal. You yeah. know, Coach Black had those guys rolling. Uh, offensively, we did a fairly good job. As you mentioned, it was just two key plays that really kind of hurt you know, getting that game into a comfortable uh, position. And that was uh, um, our quarterback, um, Terrence Mack Jr., being stopped on the line of scrimmage. And then a big throw by Derek Cook to, De uh, uh, to Devin Cook. And with like eight seconds left and the clock is running, right. the officials stood over the ball quite a bit. But I'm not blaming them. You know, coaching ethics and all those things, um, we can always find fault with officials, which is like people find fault with us as coaches. But we understand the assignment. It's a part of the game. They're a part of the game in that aspect and make sure everybody's set and the chains are set and all things considered. But, you know, it didn't work out the way we wanted it to. However, uh, we're going back to that word perseverance. You know, our guys yeah. fought through a mental second half, not a physical second half, and we were able to go uh, in overtime and get a win. Um, I shared this with you, I believe, earlier this week, but also kind of learn as you listen more than you talk, you know, from Wake, one of Wake Forest uh, coaching staff um, guys. And, you know, it matched up us to the T. Um, we're a team that is very resilient, right? And I, I think I shared with you that that was a cultural victory. You know, that's the culture of our program to persevere, right? When I first introduced myself, I said it's all built on pride, perseverance, respect, integrity, determination, and excellence, right? That, that's our acronym for PRIDE for this program. And they're just a resilient group. You know, you don't know if they're 9-0 and o or 4-5. <laughs> and five. You know, every day they come to practice, they got a chip on their shoulder, and these young men are trying to really get better. Um, I believe that's also a testament to our coaching staff, Mark, that, um, you know, they come to work every day. So you you match, you emulate what you see, you know, from your leadership and our uh, I give them praise as much as I can and as often as I can to our staff about how they come to work every day. Yes, and then, uh, you know, here it is. The last two years we've had a bye this week, you know, but, uh, you know, this this year our bye was earlier in the yeah. season. So tomorrow, you know, it's uh, time to get on the bus. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, the high-rise bridge won't be uh, – won't be too bad, but right. uh, going over to Great Bridge Boulevard here for Oscar Smith's 
uh, senior night. Senior night, absolutely. Yeah. So um, to go back, to go forward, right, uh, bye week. Our bodies are thrown off, but these kids, man, they responded this whole week. You know, it was kind of neat to see. Very loose this week, but working. Um, obviously, the weather on Monday, you didn't see one kid complaining, and they were flying around and moving. Um, yesterday, we had a pretty good practice as well, including, um, you know, Monday. So it's it's really, and I told our guys yesterday, this game is really about putting it all together. You know, we've been in playoff mode since uh, Deep Creek lost. Right. And, you know, the fight to get into it, right? Um, and the fight not only to get into it, but to have a respectful um, record, you know, going into the playoffs. So, you know, it's a lot of things, uh, Mark, that we have really kind of chipped away with with our young men, and they've responded very well. Uh, going back over to Oscar Smith, we understand that stadium. We understand that atmosphere. Uh, our kids, you know, they're no longer, in my humble opinion, you know, phased about the cage and all the hoopla. We just got to go out and play boring football. You know, trust all things considered, especially each other on the field, to the right and left of, you know, any kid that's on that field. Um, and just play our style. You know, we play our style. We don't beat ourselves. Uh, it should be a good ball game. Yes, and, uh, you know, last the last two years we've also – Met him in the playoffs, you know, two years ago, regional championship. Uh, last year, uh, regional uh, regional semifinal, you know. And actually, last year, we were starting off here strong. And then midway through the game, Oscar Smith had some momentum. But then Parker read that uh, screen pass like a book and yeah. took it to the house. And that was pretty much the clincher. Here as we um, as we moved on and we went to Manchester there right. last year in the playoff. Correct, and you know that's that's one of the things. Uh, not not trying to you know discount uh, what you shared, but that was one of the things our kids had to really realize. We're not last year's team, right? You know, and we shouldn't expect every team to give us that level of respect as. They were good a year ago. They're going to be good now. But, you know, with a young group, as I mentioned, with a, a group that's resilient, as I mentioned, you know, it's been a lot of highs this year. It's been a lot of lows, right? Mm -hmm. um, but our kids keep battling. Um, that's something our kids finally understood. You know, the Paul Billups of the world, the C.J. Frazier's, um, you know, Taquan Trotman's, those guys are not coming back into this locker room. They will be back for support. Right. But they, their their time of you know helping us go one and zero, they've exhausted that eligibility, right? So you know at the end of the day, it's 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 about these boys now, uh, twenty five class, twenty four, uh, twenty six, you know, twenty seven. So and those guys get it now, they understand it. Uh, but it's also neat to see each week them get better, and when we don't meet that success um, ho holistically, like all the way around. We understand by different groups, we could have been a little bit better here, a little bit better there. That could have been a difference maker. And, you know, that's that's the the final I, aha moment for me. These guys understand, you know, it's about us right now. Right. It's about our class, and it's about getting it done this season. Yep. Yeah, and, and to all the fans out there, I mean, everybody, everybody is uh, finishing up. I think uh, Lansdowne, who, which is a group six school, you yes. know, they, they got their 10th regular season game actually tonight. tonight you know, yeah. they, uh, they, they host green run, um, you know, and then, uh, and then everybody else, you know, finishes up either tomorrow or Saturday afternoon. So right. probably Sunday or first thing Monday, you know, the, the matchups there for the playoffs here will come out, come out officially, Absolutely. which is, which is uh, next Next week, I mean, so definitely no. Uh, you make it to the postseason, there's no. Oh, let's get you know. Hey, it's uh, right back at it. Right, and, and and that's all it is, you know. Um, late in the season, you got to you kind of get into a flow, right? You understand how your practice flow should be. You know where you got to pull back a little bit, and you got to you know turn it on a little bit more here or there. Um, you know, ultimately, I feel like, in my humble opinion, our focus is tonight. You know, sometimes you get that text at midnight. Hey, it looks like we're playing y'all. Can we exchange film now? But right now it's about Oscar Smith High School and West Branch High School and competing to finish the season out. Um, 
And then, you know, like you said, Saturday into Sunday, Sunday possibly into Monday, as the VHSL kind of filters through all the divisions, you know, all the schools that are, you know, going to represent their their uh, division. And I believe it's 32 teams per division, right? So that's, that's uh, what, 128, if my math is right. Uh, if my math is right, right, uh, yeah. maybe a little more. So I've been out of school for a long time, guys. <laughs> but wow. at the end of the day, it's 32 per um, the, the division conversation I'm saying is one, two, three, four, five, and six. We also know their, their brackets right. um, that is broken up and, and put together. But all, all in all, it's a lot of manipulation and a lot of, uh, you know, things that got to go into consideration. And I believe the beaches, are, the beach schools are all playing tonight, I believe. Oh, and then yeah. obviously we will, in our district, wrap up tomorrow unless there's something we miss going yeah. into tonight and then obviously Saturday for some. So you're absolutely – Spot on. I'm getting myself off the hook of, of my math right now, I'm trying to put it all together. Uh, no. People hired for that, not me. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is about halfway through the season, I saw a local person that that did the that did the rankings. Yes. You know, and so I ended up posting it. Well then when the VHSL came came out with theirs, I knew that a couple of teams were different so i know that vhsl is official and you know you talk about math i mean i mean i tried one one sunday that i was vegging with one o'clock and four o'clock game near the house i tried to look at that formula yeah you know what i don't mind sharing what the vhsl puts out because my math was somewhat (laughs) strong but to do this formula yeah. with rankings and power know, rankings and everything, even though yeah. you lose, but then you know people that you beat might continue to win. You know, hey, I'll just wait till Monday when the VHSL, right. you know, gets right. out their latest so it, rankings. One one um, team, you know, that really kind of helped us this year was Benedictine. Right. You know, they're number one in the state. I believe – I'm going to tell you the guy you need. Coach Joe Jones can break down numbers. He knows how to crunch them, and, and he's spot on in most cases. But, you know, he mentioned earlier this week, like Tuesday, like Cook Benedictine is help, pretty much helping us by our strength of schedule. And right. obviously they are number one in their division, um, number one in the state right now yeah. at their ranking. And, you know, again, so when you look at Kings Fort, when you look at – um Indian River, when you look at Benedictine and the teams we played that are definitely going to be contenders, uh, Nansma River, you know, those were quality uh, games, if that makes sense, in the eyes of the Virginia High School League. But as you mentioned, Mark, is that they got the right staff to get that done for us. You know, once you get it, we, then you're good at what you do. And, and I'm good at what I do. We'll be able to figure it out by then. But, yeah, I'm with you, man. It's just good to – you know, have our kids be able to compete. This will be our third straight season uh, to be able to compete in the post. You know, and yeah. I look at it as bowl games. It's an extra practice. It gets our young guys that are no longer freshmen, you know, the extra rep now, a week of prep or multiple weeks of prep to continue to get better than some schools. And we shared that with our kids a year ago that, you know, to get where we were, that was like 15 to 20 more practices that other, other programs couldn't get. You know, so it's it's like a bowl game mindset, but it's ultimately a championship uh, uh, series. Yeah, and for all the listeners out there, I mean, it's for VHSL. I think it's similar with VISAA that Benedict. Yes. You know, but it's all based on enrollment, and so you know, five A and five B. I mean, that's you know, one of those groups is like. Nothing but Beach and Chesapeake, while five, while the other side of five is Suffolk and the Peninsula, you right. know, And then Group Six here, we just we just got you know uh, four schools here in our area: Lansdowne, us, Grassfield, Oscar Smith. Everybody else is eight oh four, and yeah. you have eleven teams there in six A, and you just finish in the top eight. And you know, one thing that I expressed to the team there on Tuesday is, is, Hey, when the first, when the regular season is over, it's time to focus the part two 
and then part two of the season, yeah. that's really one one and oh mindset. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's spot on. Right. So, but hey, it's uh, I know with uh, time crunch, you know, but uh, definitely appreciate your time here to have this weekend and week out, and uh, yes. I'll uh, I'll see you guys there at. Uh, they're at Great Bridge Boulevard there tomorrow evening. And uh, JB, JB, they're finishing out their season here tonight with uh, Os- Post and Oscar Smith, right? Absolutely. You know, Coach Thomas has uh, – I want to bring this up real quick. He's been so phenomenal, you know, to my, to me in this transition and to my process. But as he mentioned a long time ago, he said, Cook, I don't – I'm not the head coach, but I feel like one, you know, and that, and that was the intent right there. Uh, having a strong man in our community, a strong man within uh, Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, and, and all things considered, just, you know, it's the right fit. And uh, tonight he coaches uh, his last official JV game. Um, so, you know, we want to wish him well and on the green pastures as he uh, will soon transition right. to the hardwood. Right, be the head man here at Western Branch and lead those guys. Uh, but it's been so many great memories, and he laughs. He laughs at me a lot, but I think he understands when I tell him certain things at certain times. That there's years from now we're gonna be able to call each other, sit back, laugh, and all things considered. Um, so I just wanted to give a big shout out to just a phenomenal spirit, a phenomenal human being, a phenomenal person. So many great words. You can use for Coach Charles Thomas, man. But uh, I think some of the best don't have to be said. You know, uh, it's just the memories that we've been able to create together. Um, I shared with our guys last year, you know, he could have easily – last week, I mean, he could have easily been the head coach of this program. Uh, but God saw it a different way. But God also allowed him to still be so impactful. And, you know, I just want to give him his flowers. And just from me to him, thank you. I love him. Uh, he will always be a part of my life, you know. And um, I want to give a birthday shout out to Coach yeah. E. Yeah. <laughs> Today's his birthday, and he's right. been a huge integral part as a Bruin alum as well, much like Coach Thomas, uh, in this growth and development of this football program under my leadership. And, you know, it's just awesome to have men around you that, you know, you just feel covered. You know, you feel that you don't have to worry. And those guys along uh, amongst many on our staff is there. Um, I want to send prayers out real quick to uh, Coach Ed and Ted, uh, to the Townsley, Townsley family. Um, uh, just, you know, just they, they've been in our thoughts and prayers all week. Uh, they've been with us in spirit, although they're where they need to be right now. And the leadership, uh, the way we built this program is always around family. So, you know, it's, it's nothing more important than family right now. And right now God needs uh, them around Miss Townsley and just, you know, just thankful. Lastly, I uh, just want to tell, uh, not even tell, I just want to say thank you uh, to all of us, all of our support staff, uh, our admin team, uh, stu- a school student body, um, our uh, booster club, you know, th- those women and men who have really put together a great season for our young boys to not look, to not ask for anything, but just be thankful and grateful uh, our Booster Club has been phenomenal. So it, it's the, it's week 10. You know, I think this is only fitting uh, for this brief moment to give thank yous to all of those. Uh, most and, and then lastly, the wives, the spouses, the girlfriends, the, the friends that have allowed our coaching staff to really work together uh, for over 20 plus weeks, including the uh, summer um, yeah. and off season of the new year. Just a big thank you. Things you shouldn't take for granted. And things that don't happen often, you know, this is a great staff and a great community. Um, you know, we're just thankful. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah well, you know what, uh, Rashad, if somebody says, hey, the team's getting ready to play game 10. Why is this episode 11? Because something brewing doesn't take a week <laughs> off in the regular season. I know that's right. <laughs> I love it. I love well, it. Absolutely. But, uh, Absolutely. All right, man. Well, hey, I'll let you get back out to – practice and uh yeah there with uh there with charles and um you know the birthday shout out to eric i mean two two guys that i first met across the field when we were students there at 
Hawksley Drive, you know. There you there, go. <laughs> it was just seventh and eighth grade, eighth grade at yeah. that building. You know? Wow, but, that's uh, awesome. Yep, yep. So, so but I'll uh, let you go and okay. I'll I'll see you guys there um on the sidelines tomorrow night. Go Brooklyn. Absolutely. All right, be blessed. All right, see you. See you.